Yeah, hi there. These comments are for J.A. and I am Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons at Stealth, the online TOEFL course called the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. And you are one of my TOEFL writing boot camp students, so you're following my course outline and you completed an independent writing practice test and you want me now to correct it, to give you a score and to show you what you need to do in order to get a perfect score on this essay. Now for you, my recommendation is I would tell you to get some popcorn and a soda and watch a video, but probably you need to be more active than that. So instead, I'm going to ask you to get some, some paper and a pen and start taking some notes. I'm going to give you some key information as we go through the essay and then at the end of this video I will tell you which areas in my online course you need to focus on more in order to improve your writing. That's what it's all about. Okay so um, I went over to the rubrics here and I think I'm putting you in the, in the uh, three, I'm going to put you at 3.25 out of 5 21 points out of 30 on this thing. So you have some problems with sentence formation. Uh, you have some limited range of sentence structures. Sometimes it's difficult to understand the connection of your ideas. And you have somewhat developed explanations, examples, and details. So these are some of the reasons why I put you in this range. But what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything to you, right? Now what we need to do is, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So, 3, 2, 5 out of 5, or 21 points out of 30. Now what if, what if we rewrite this, this is exactly what I'm going to do. It sounds crazy, but I'm going to show you what you have to do to get a score of 5 on this. So you will see what you didn't do, what you should have done in order to, to get that high score. So to get a score of 5.5 out of 5 or 30 points out of 30, you just want to keep watching this video. Okay, so let's start with our first paragraph here. You say, many students move away from home when they enter college. So I would not put enter to college. Just say enter college. So I'm going to write down. So this is what I call unnecessary preposition. You say, this means you can't put a comma here and then use a separate independent clause after that. That creates what's called a comma splice. So you can go to Google and type in the keywords, what is a comma splice? Now the, the thing is, what can you do here? You can do a few things here. You could put a semicolon, but you already use that here, right? So you could probably um, change this to which. I don't think you need a comma here. Many students move away from home when they enter college, which means that in many cases they have to share an apartment. Living in a house with other people rather than the family is a complicated situation. Therefore, it is important to set a list of qualities that help to ensure a healthy companionship is better. So that's a word choice issue. Companion is a person, but the companionship refers to the two people living together. It's kind of like a friendship, a companionship. So it's better, instead of using a noun, person, change it to a noun thing by using the word ship on there. Say, so in my opinion, the people who share a place with someone else need to be clean, respectful, and responsible. I will explain these reasons in the following paragraph. That's good. You have a thesis, right? Now, the other thing is, uh, we're going to make a few changes with these different paragraphs, so I will show you what changes and why. So the, the first paragraph is actually very well written. You have a good, strong introduction with a focused thesis statement. And how many words is it? I like it to be around 100. You're, you're close. You're around 82 words, right? But you start out with some general ideas. You move to more specific information, so that's a good strategy. Okay, my first big change in paragraph two is you actually need, I'm going to give you a topic sentence here. So you said nobody wants to live in a dirty house. 
However, many people struggle to clean their own room. But the question is, how does that relate to what are some of the most important qualities of a good roommate? So, you probably want to say here, I'm going to kind of restate this idea, important quality, right? And give you more of a general idea here. So first of all, a good roommate should be clean. So I start off with more of a topic or general idea. Then I follow through with what you said here. So notice with your paragraph, your support patterning, start off with more of a general idea and then move to a more specific uh, point after that. So nobody wants to live in a dirty house. You say many people, but I wouldn't do that. We're not just talking about people in general. Some roommates struggle to clean their own room. Fail to we'll say public living spaces clean as well. That's what I would say there. Now, notice how here I put a semicolon after the word house to avoid that comma splice. So that's the second time you've had some problems with sentence structure with that. You say, as a way of example, nobody's going to say that. I would say for instance, when I entered college, You say have, but no, I had to live. Why? Because you said entered, right? So this is a verb tense problem. Verb tense error. So I had to live in a different town. So I shared an apartment with two other persons. You need a period here because now you have a new sentence here. So we say everyone. Everyone had their own rooms. But there were some common places such as the kitchen and the living room. I would say and here, it's not really that much of a contrast. You have rooms and you have common places. They're not like opposite. It's all part of the same living arrangement, right? One of the major problems was that one of the guys never cleaned neither the plates nor the glasses. Okay, that's good parallelism there. Neither plates nor glasses that he used when he ate. Be careful. You have eat, ate, eaten. So you're using the past participle form of the verb when you should be using the simple past form of the verb. Again, as a result, this is your big problem. You must put a period or a semicolon here and then say, as a result, some bugs started to appear. Eventually, the house was full of them. And here I would use cause effect. Con Consequently, I left the house and I have never shared a room again Okay, this is okay. Now here's a problem. This is the problem here. You have respectful as your second support point, right? But you went from being clean to being responsible. So there is no, there's, you don't have this second idea, right? So we need to develop this second point. So before we have finally, we need a paragraph that talks about respect. 
Okay, so because you didn't use the uh, respect paragraph, right, I went ahead and developed a paragraph focused in that area, so it kind of goes like this. Second of all, in addition to being clean, roommates should also be respectful to others with whom they're living. Now notice what I did here. In the very beginning of this paragraph, I used in addition to being clean, which ties back to the topic of the, the first body paragraph. And then I say, roommates should also be respectful to others with whom they're living. This now announces the topic of this paragraph. This is called a transition sentence. These are good sentences to do every now and then in your integrated or independent writing. It shows that you understand how to connect ideas together. And that's a good thing. Okay, so let's see what I have. It says, in other words, roommates should hold each other in high regard or have admiration for each other. This is closely connected to roommates who are considerate to others around them. To illustrate, to show respect to others in the apartment, roommates will not play music loudly at night that might be distracting to others. Or, roommates will not have wild parties until late at night because they should have respect for others in the apartment who are trying to sleep or study. Therefore, roommates who do not display respect and consideration will not be able to get along very well with others in the apartment. There we go. So now let's move on to your next paragraph. Okay, so you say, finally, the main reason someone shares a house is because, notice how someone is singular. It says someone shares, right? So then, you should probably say this. She or he wants to divide the expenses. And again, another comma splice. This is your third error with this one. This is something we got to stop. In this case, you can put a semicolon or a period because she wants, he or she wants to divide the expenses. Hence, the roommate has to be responsible enough with the payments and deadlines. I would say here, it is important that I'm going to use subjunctive mood here. Uh, hence, it is important that roommates be responsible enough with the deadlines. Now, why did I say it like this? Right, I'm always thinking of the writing prompt, right? It's important that roommates be responsible enough with the payments and the deadlines because here we have what are some of the important qualities of a good roommate. So we're trying to connect each of the topic sentences back to that purpose. Now, if you don't want to say important because you've said it before, you could probably use the word essential. You ever use that word? Okay, so let's go here, so we could do that. It is essential that roommates be responsible enough with the payments and the deadlines. For instance, if any of the guys who lived in the house, you don't need a comma here, and you're saying any of the guys who lived, you want to say didn't there. You're talking about a present impossible condition. If any of the guys who lived in the house didn't pay his, his share of the light bill, everybody would suffer the consequences. And then you could say, which is why, which is why is important to carefully select I would say everybody would suffer due to the
I'm going to use the word irresponsible here. Remember, we're trying to keep everything connected, so sometimes we repeat a certain word several times. In this case, it's important to repeat the word responsible, but instead of saying responsible, I put irresponsible. So everybody would suffer the consequences due to the irresponsible nature of one person. Which is why it is important to carefully select the mates. Yet this paragraph is not quite developed enough. How many words do we have here? Let's look at this. So I think we need to develop this a little bit more, right? So the question is what can we do here? How about this? Worse yet, is it responsible managing his money? He may not be able to pay his share of the rent at the beginning of the month thereby That's probably good enough. I might say that, so I think I have it. So what did I do here? I've developed this paragraph, so instead of what you had, uh, we're now at about 123 words. I think this works a little bit better than what you did. So I presented two different examples to illustrate the importance of responsibility, right? So let's look at it yet. Finally, the main reason someone shares a house is because she or he wants to divide the expenses, hence. It is essential that roommates be responsible enough with the payments and the deadlines. For instance, if any of the guys who lived in the house didn't pay his share of the light bill, everybody would suffer the consequences due to the irresponsible nature of one person. Now go to Google. You need to understand how to use this. This is what we call real and unreal conditions. You're talking about a present impossible situation. Okay, so if you go to Google, you type in the keywords real and unreal conditions in the present or the past and then you need to review what types of verb tenses you need to use when you're referring to things using that tone. That's important for you. That's grammar that you're not sure about right now. Worse yet, if any one of the roommates isn't responsible managing his money, he may not be able to pay his share of the rent at the beginning of the month, thereby forcing others to face to I'm going to say to pay his share so they do not get evicted. As a result, it is important to carefully select roommates. And see, I added, you didn't say this. You just said it's important to carefully select roommates. No, to select roommates who have responsible character traits. Why am I saying that? Because that's what you said in the beginning of your paragraph. So we're trying to make the whole paragraph unified. 
We can do that through repeating keywords, especially keywords that you have in your topic sentences and your thesis statement. You can repeat or rephrase those keywords as you move through your writing, and that helps keep things connected. Okay, so you say, in conclusion, it can be difficult to live with someone else, especially when the other person has different habits or values, but this complication can be coped. You want to use past participle here. Can be coped by selecting only people that meet some essential requirements, such as... I'm going to say... I'm going to say being clean... being clean, respectful, and responsible, not responsibility. That's a parallelism, par parallel structure issue there. Why am I telling you that? If you notice, clean is an adjective, respectful is an adjective, and then responsible is an adjective. Then you say which guarantees a healthy coexistence. Very good final paragraph, by the way. Okay, so this is what you wrote. You got 21 points out of 30. And uh, let's take a look. Let's see how many words you have, and let's see what kinds of changes that we made with that. So I think you're around 320. You're 314 words, right? So then uh, we added that one paragraph that you did not have about respect, right? So that gave you another 100. So let's see where we are right now. All right, so we're at 510 words. We added about 200 more words to your writing. Uh, we did not make really any structural changes to the introduction because you had an excellent thesis. You had a very good focus. However, I made some changes with your topic sentences and body paragraphs two and three. And uh, I also added that, that one paragraph about respect, right? Now let's read it one more time, and after we do this, then we want to um, go into my website and see what you need to focus on to help you address some of your problems that you're having, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, do some spell checking. Okay, here we go. You ready? So we will start here. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see exactly what's going on here. So here we go, paragraph one. Many students move away from home when they enter college, which means that in many cases they have to share an apartment. Living in a house with other people rather than the family is a complicated situation. Therefore, it is important to set a list of qualities that help to ensure a healthy companionship. In my opinion, the people who share a place with someone else need to be clean, respectful, and responsible. I will explain these reasons in the following paragraphs. You don't even need that. That doesn't really do anything. It doesn't advance what you're doing. You have a thesis. Why add to it? So you have, first of all, a good roommate should be clean. Nobody wants to live in a dirty house. However, some roommates struggle to clean their own room and fail to keep public living spaces clean as well. For instance, when I entered college, I had to live in a different town, so I shared an apartment with two other persons. Everyone had their own rooms, and there were some common places, such as a kitchen and the living room. One of the major problems was that one of the guys never cleaned neither the plates nor the glasses that he used when he ate. As a result, some bugs started to appear. Eventually, the house was full of them. Consequently, I left the house and I have never shared a room again. Second of all, in addition to being clean, roommates should also be respectful to others with whom they are living. In other words, roommates should hold each other in high regard or have admiration for each other. This is closely connected to roommates who are considerate to others around them. To illustrate, to show respect to others in the apartment, roommates will not play music loudly at night that might be distracting to others. Or, 
roommates will not have wild parties until late at night because they should have respect for others in the apartment who are trying to sleep or study. Therefore, roommates who do not display respect and consideration will not be able to get along very well with others in the apartment or house. Finally, the main reason someone shares a house is because she or he wants to divide the expenses. Hence, it is essential that roommates be responsible enough with the payments and the deadlines. For instance, if any of the guys who lived in the house didn't pay his share of the light bill, everybody would suffer the consequences due to the irresponsible nature of one person. Worse yet, if one of the roommates isn't responsible managing his money, he I need to change this to not, he may not be able to pay his share of the rent at the beginning of the month, thereby forcing others to pay his share so that they do not get evicted. As a result, it is important to carefully select roommates who have responsible character traits. In conclusion, it can be difficult to live with someone else, especially when the other person has different habits or values, but this complication can be coped by selecting only people that meet some essential requirements such as being clean, respectful, and responsible, which guarantees a healthy coexistence. Okay, now the question is, uh, what do you need to do right now? What are some practice exercises you can do at my website which will strengthen your writing? Remember, the purpose here, it's not a good idea to just study grammar, but if, if you study grammar for a purpose to help address errors you're making in your writing, to me that's a more practical approach to dealing with uh, grammar and integrating that within your writing and speaking competency, right? Uh, I, I think here, Lesson 6, Sentences with Adjective Clauses, uh, I'd recommend you take a look at that. Also, 6.1, using that and which and adjective clauses. I think that's a good idea. Uh, lesson 12, sometimes, you remember, you had some problems using nouns versus adjectives, so word forms. Lesson number 12, uh, parallel structure. Lesson 14 is one. Word order. You said select carefully. I said carefully select. So that's a word order issue. So that's lesson number 15. Verb tenses. Wow. Man. Uh, I would do everything about verb tenses and maybe even if you have a grammar book you need to study more about this. This is a big issue in your writing right now. So all of these areas about verb tenses I recommend you take a look at. Okay, let's take a look more here. Uh, using passive verbs, I think, is also something that can help you with your writing right now. Uh, lesson 25, for God's sake, study comma splices. You must stop this error. This is killing your sentence structure. So get a handle on this, especially comma splices. That's a big problem for you. Lesson 27, being more concise, I think, is important. Um, another one is when to use commas. Boy, you should take a look at that one. Boy, boy, boy. Focus a lot on that. So when to use commas. Uh, that's an important exercise for you. Semicolons actually pretty good. You understand a lot about that one. So those are some things that you can do in the grammar part of my course to strengthen your writing. Now let's go to the writing part of my course. Let's see if there's anything that I recommend here. Um... I think overall you understand the idea of a thesis, right? So that's good. I'm not going to recommend that. Uh, I want you to take a look at 5.1 writing effective topic sentences, also writing the perfect paragraph. This is uh, lesson number 5.6. I think that's a good lesson you can take a look at. Also, uh, lesson 5.5, how to show depth and complexity of thought. I think that would be a good idea for you. Conclusion was perfect. I have no recommendations for there. So that's what you can do. Those are some things you can do right now. So I recommend go through these lessons. I recommend and study them. Now, you also will be sending my teaching assistant independent writing practices. Send him many. 
Now, my course outline, it tells you when to send in writing practice, but if you want to do more practice than that, you can certainly do that. You need a lot more practice, I think, to get more familiar with writing. Now, your next step also is you have one more video correction you can do. You, I, I recommend that you use one of the integrated writing practice tests that you do when you're ready. You can do the practice test and then send it to me by, by email like you just did with this one, and I will also error correct that video. All right, so there you go. So those are my comments for you. So I gave you a score. I told you why. I restructured. I corrected your essay. I showed you what you need to do in order to score higher or to get a perfect score. I even recommended specific grammar and writing lessons that you can review right now to strengthen your writing skills. Keep going. Keep working hard. Don't get discouraged. My job is to tell you what you're doing wrong. Your job is to keep practicing. Keep sending more writing practice. I promise you, you will get better as you practice. So don't get frustrated. Just keep practicing. You will be able to overcome these problems. All right?